This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. To the highway, in a brand new day, gotta let it go. Fast to freedom, Welcome back to Open the Voice Gate for April 20th, 2021. We are members of the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. You can find us on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast feed, or you can find us on our own dedicated podcast feed on all podcast platforms and applications. You can follow us on Twitter at Open Voice Gate. If you would like to donate to the show, just click the link in the show notes. It'll take you to our redcircle.com landing site. You click the red rectangle. I've been saying square or box for a while, but it's a rectangle that says donate to the show and you could do a one-time or reoccurring donation i think it's actually sponsor the show but you get what i'm saying one time a reoccurring no obligation whatsoever but we would like to thank all of our previous donors i'm one of your hosts it's your old pal Aaron mike spears joined as always my friend and co-host case low in case it is the unofficial holiday of one of the lamest unofficial holidays possible but to ask you are you smoking that good good today, Case? Because I know you're not. I'm just wondering to see if you know strains of weed. Because knowing how you are, I'd be completely <laughs> knowing surprised. Knowing how I am, oh my goodness, Mike Spears, uh, this is true. I, 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 I'll, I, I'll be doing the same bit tomorrow morning with Aaron Bentley. So, uh, to, to... <laughs> I am nailed to the X. I'm true till death. I am armed with a mind. Whatever other straight edge cliche that you want to throw out there. I did not I did not wear a straight edge t shirt today because I thought that would be a little it would be a little too on the nose. It would also just be really sad because I didn't leave my apartment today and just like the idea of of self owning the cannabis consumers in Illinois where it's legal anyways by wearing my have heart t shirt in my studio apartment, that would have been a little much. It's I, I am I'm fine with uh with the consumption, it doesn't bother me. I live by a, a dispensary that constantly has a line outside of the door, which is always a little jarring to me just because yeah, it's it's always just, you know, like young, athletic, trim, good-looking people out there. It's like, oh, God, that's it's, – it's just not a part of my life, and I forget and, that it's a part of other people's lives. And, 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 like, the thing is is that, like, South Carolina, it's not even close to legalized. But, like, <laughs> well, whenever, you like, you hear, like, people, like, celebrate it and whenever, like, I mean, my emails, like, the, the various 420-related things I've seen today, okay, so I'm just like, all right, y'all have done it. Don't worry about legalizing it. Pot's not cool anymore because because if, if I'm getting DoorDash telling me, like, hey, you've got the munchies, here's $10 off of your cookout order, like, what is the point? And then also, I'm willing to bet I, I I'm firing on all cylinders today, okay? So if you <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I, I'm willing to bet that nearly everyone in that dispensary line, well, it, it sits a sits a perfect type, you know. I I would say that that like the the, the people that you would be talking about the dispensary line, and you know, and look, well, it's well, on the well, north side of Chicago on Wrigleyville. Yeah, there's uh, uh, there's a type there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it it's just like I'm just like all right, y'all like whatever at this point like of course we need to expunge all all marijuana possession arrests and you know like clear the deck there of course for the carceral state but come on like I, really I, mean, look, I, I work in morning radio i work on a show that's live 6 to 10 a.m every single day and if you think our entire show prep today wasn't let's have listeners call in and tell stories about when they were high you would be mistaken it was pretty much four hours of that and that only but you know what? Hey, it made your life easier. So that's one reason why we could celebrate this day. Oh, it was the, the formatting sheet of like the notes I take so I can pull clips for later. I was like, well, this was a story about somebody being high and this was a story about someone being high and well, I'll clip that story about someone being high. It was a, yeah, not a bad day at work by any means. 
<laughs> but we are not here to talk about it, even though everyone jokes around about natural vibes. You know, we're talking about the latest week in Dragon Gate. We've had our. I was actually surprised to say to see this. Not that they've only had one Fukuoka weekend this year, so it's their second Fukuoka weekend of this year. We are coming to this week is a pretty big week coming up ahead with with uh, a, the, the monthly Kobe Sambo Hall show, of course, but. More importantly, the start of Speed Star Final Countdown in Higashi Osaka on the 24th case. So just off the top, it's an interesting week. We are ticking down the days to Dead or Alive and King of Gate. We spent a good bit of time talking about that last week. But, you know, we have these four shows that they had until Dead or Alive. We have the final kind of buildup, and we're seeing the... The the I, I don't want to say like the undercard stuff because there's title matches being behind there's but but they're fleshing out the dead or alive card so like what's your l- let's do a little bit of a mental health check what's your mental health on Dragon Gate after you know last week was a tough week with that Corkin but we had two shows in Fukuoka and now we we're looking ahead to a pretty big Sambo Hall show and of course the start of the Masato Yoshino retirement series. Uh, the question of how my mental health is doing uh, versus how is my mental health in Dragon Gate, those are two drastically different answers. Of course, I will, yes, I will, yes. I will answer the Dragon Le- Gate side of the Leading things. question. <laughs> leading question for me. I apologize. No, uh, I am pumped because I thought there was a lot of fun stuff on these Fukuoka shows. I thought there was one great match this weekend and a number of other things that I, I quite honestly really, really liked. I think the upcoming Sambo Hall show could be very fun. There was some stuff there that caught my eye. The Masato Yoshino show on April 24th. At the very least, I think the last two matches are going to be uh, pretty solid. And this Dead or Alive card, the way it's shaping up with Skywalker versus Kakuta, with Yamato and Kai versus Drankin and SB Kento in the cage, and now Masaki Mochizuki and Takashi Yoshida versus Kaito Ishida and Kazuma Sakamoto, that is as strong of a three-match lineup as they have put together in quite some time. So, I, I, you know, we'll have some speculation on other title matches they could do on that show. But, yeah, I'm pumped for the next few weeks. There's a lot coming down the line. And then, you know, obviously, once we get past Dead or Alive, we are straight into King of Gate. So, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I feel much better about the promotion uh, coming into this week than I did last week. Yeah, and that that was kind of what my response was to the Fukuoka de- double shot. I don't need to go on my rampage about across Fukuoka as a venue for this promotion like I do every time we talk about it. But did you think, by the way, did you think the venue? And I don't know what the attendance numbers are or were compared to prior shows. You probably do. I thought the venue looked really full this time around, which was nice to see. Well, funny you mentioned that. Uh, combined attendance for the day night was six oh three versus five twenty nine. Yeah, so pretty that, far up. That that yeah. that uh, second show, the opening match, Susumu Yokosuka goes into the crowd and they kind of do a nice pan of the hard camera side, people that you normally wouldn't see in that venue on camera. And I thought, right. man, there's there's quite a bit of people there. That's kind of nice to see. Yeah, but like the venue felt more lively for sure this week and then like yeah like between these two shows like there there will always be some going through the motions wrestling that happens when you have two matches in a day and especially like the way that dragon gate does it and how they kind of you know you you know who's going to be in a featured match and one they're going to put forth full effort or that they're going to go for it rather and then some match that's like all right i'm opening the show with uh uh, I'm opening the, the the show. We're gonna get the natural vibes dance. I know what I'm gonna be doing here, and you know, piecing through like th- these two Foco Oka shows, I thought that overall it was the 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 storyline stuff. There was some storyline stuff. That I'm kind of like, okay, I'm ready to see like the blow off. But overall, you know, I mean, not the worst Fukuoka weekend. And we and I have one notebook match. And I think it's a different notebook match than you have, Case. So there's a lot in this weekend in Fukuoka. Well, let, let's run through it quickly. Let's talk about this first show. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, or I just mentioned, attendance massively up, 603 across both shows. This one, in comparison to the one earlier this year, 278 to 238. So usually in these double headers, the, the front half usually kind of eats it, and then and then the second half is such a bigger show than they, it ends up being like this. But still, 279 there is pretty strong attendance. Uh 
I'm going to start reading down the results. I think it's probably the best way to handle this case, and we'll, we'll, we'll go and revisit the stuff that we feel like it's worth revisiting after I go through each show. Sounds good to me. All right, so the first show, these are up on the network until the 25th. Opener, unaffiliated tag team versus R.E.D., Naruki Doi, Gamma, and Kagatora defeat Diamante, Kazuma Sakamoto, and Hio of R.E.D., Doi over Hio with the Bakatari sliding kick. Second match, Bensuke of High End, that is Binke and Keisuke Akuda versus the, the Team Boku team of Ryo Saito and Punch Tomonaga. Tomonaga got the pen, cradling out of the sleeper hold in 7 minutes and 35 seconds on Keisuke Akuda. Match three, KZ versus Bokudamo Dragon. Of course, Bokudamo Dragon has been un- unmasked as Big R Sh- Shimizu, but he will be still wrestling as Bokudamo Dragon, I guess, until I- I'm guessing until the cage case. They-, they they haven't really said how long we're going to still have Bokudamo, right? No, I-, I I think for sure it's until the end of this tour, but I don't know if we have a launch date on the new character yet. Yeah, that- that's what I was saying. Like, uh, if it's not. If they're not going to finish that up in Higashi Osaka, then it's probably going to be finished up at uh, Nagoya, Dead or Alive. But match four, Ultimo Dragon, Misaki Mochizuki, Takashi Yoshida, of course, all three of those unaffiliated, versus the Natural Vibes team, Misasumi Yokosuka, Ginki Horiguchi, and UT. UT with the win with the Passion on Mochizuki in 11 minutes, 29 seconds. Semi-main event, Road to Dead or Alive tag, special tag team match. Yamato and Kai versus Dragon Kid and SB Kento. These are the exact sides that will be happening in Nagoya on the 5th. It was SB Kento getting the pin on Yamato after a misfired lariat by Kai. The main event, R.E.D. versus Masquerade. Full complement of Masquerade, Shun, Kota Minonora, Jason Lee in Australia versus Eita, BB Hulk, Kaido Ishida, and Hip Hop Kakuda. Hip Hop Kakuda. Got the win, 60 minutes and two seconds with a hand of God rolling lariat on Kota Minenora. So interesting first show, I'll say. I'll say just off the top case, I think I liked the first short show more than I did the uh, evening one. Uh, wh- what was your thoughts overall on the morning show? I would co-sign that. There's nothing on this show. Well, there's three matches I want to talk about. Two of them I really liked. One, and I'll, I'll say it up front, and I have said this on the show before, and I, I don't know what this is. I don't know why this is. Every year, Drangate runs Road 2 Dead or Alive tag matches with the uh, combatants in the cage on on various teams. I can never get into those matches, and this this Yamato and Kai versus Drangate and the SB Kento match, which is the match we're going to see, but in a cage. I, am I totally insane, or do these matches just never... The Road 2 stuff never clicks for me. I don't know why that is, but that's a reoccurring trend every year, I can never get into these matches. Yeah, and with this also, like I'm, I'm totally with you on this. I was only three and a quarter on the semi-main event. Uh, it, it, it's even more complicated this year because, like in past years, there would be like stuff like, okay, maybe whoever, whomever might be the hostage risk, the person outside the cage who might be having their hair or mask put on the line because of the person in the cage. There might still be some question and there's some stakes there. There's absolutely no stakes in this matchup. This is the exact teams that we'll be seeing in the cage. Yamato and Kai have been doing this now for over two, two years. SB Kento and Dragon Kid, you know, I mean, they've crossed half a year with their kind of feud. So it just kind of was, in a lot of ways, just building up stuff for a match that I'm already built up for. I'm just ready for that match. So all of, like, the... Row two stuff there, I felt like was completely unnecessary, and I would, I would have rather have seen like a high end versus Red tag where like you have to deal with that here than versus the straight Road to Dead or Alive match personally. Yeah, I don't love the SB Kento Kai dynamics that they're working with right now, where SB Kento was constantly undermining Kai, and I guess that goes back to the Ada tweet that we talked about a few weeks ago where. Ada was firmly aligning himself with the youth movement in R.E.D., your SBKs and your Kakutas and your Ashidas, and I, I believe, if I if I remember correctly, Kai was left out of that tweet. So they're they're teasing something there, but I, I just I'm not I'm not loving the SBK scene right now, which is unfortunate because he's still incredibly talented. But between what they've done with him and Drankin and Cork and Hall, and now what they're doing with him and Kai on the road, it's not quite clicking with me. It's a lot of heat, especially for Drangit. It's a lot of heat. Yeah, and, and, and it's something where I hate how, like, I would absolutely love on the fifth to be completely taken aback and 
DK and SB Kento uh, escape first, and then we get a Kai versus Yamato hair versus hair match. But it just does not seem like that's happening, especially like when you look at SB Kento, who has his hair in a ponytail that's this long. Like, it, 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 I would love to be bait and switch here, Case, but everything with this company has led me to believe that, like, who was the, like, Case, in the past, people who have had massively long hair going into this cage match, Ryo Saito lost his hair when that happened. Uh, Katoka's hair wasn't massively long, but it was bright and red, and it was, like, a big thing about his personality. He lost it, and just with, like, past history, I feel like that, I, I can't say he'd be a prohibitive favorite, but I've been saying this now for weeks, I feel like saying, but they are so telegraphing SB Kento losing that it kind of just changes this build in a way. Yeah, which is fine, because I, I still think come May 5th, if we get the satisfying conclusion of Dragon Kid shaving his head in the middle of the ring, great. Story's paid off. I completely understand the destination that we got to, even if I didn't love the journey all the way through. But, you know, we're looking at a schedule where we have this show, we have the Kobe Sambo Hall show this week, we've got the uh, Higashi Osaka show, the Yoshino Homecoming show that you just talked about, and then at the start of May, I mean, we've got a number of cards here, and it's going to be a lot, what I'm assuming is going to be a lot of SBK and Kai and Yamato and Dragon Kid nonsense, quite frankly, uh, with the Osaka show and the Kyoto show, uh, the two Kyoto shows before Dead or Alive. So it's just we're going to see mm-hmm. a lot of this, and it's not, it's just not landing with me right now. I, and it's something, it's like, well, well, I don't know how they could build up this match any even more, you know? And, and, unless you're putting like these four on one side and you're doing like a complete per house and Kree Blaze, and you're taking, I guess, uh, Shun Skywalker, uh, Hip Hop Kakuda, and I'm trying to think of who else. I, I, then I guess uh, Okuda and Jason Lee. Unless you're doing like those and doing an Atomicos like this on one of these three shows, you don't need to do anything else there. If anything, you're overcooking the feud at this point. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's going to be a lot. I think it's going to be frustrating to get through. But again, with this promotion, I'll reemphasize this point over, you know, their 21 years of history for the seven or eight years that I've been watching, uh, you know, on an active basis, they've earned my trust. I I have a feeling this will play out uh, in a satisfying way in the end, but I'm not loving the journey uh, to get here right now, which I talked about a lot last week with the finale to that Cork and Hall main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, these matches are so angle heavy. That it's not like like okay we know how the feud's going in the past but with the ring work is here so I'm okay if still seeing it like it, it it's a lot of gimmick stuff it's a lot of like mass grips and and miss and misfires and it's kind of like all right we, you've hammered that that point which home is crazy now. to think that we've got SPK fully ripping Dragon Kid's mask off on a Fukuoka double shot show it, it's just. We've seen this. I really think that last Cork and Hall show, they needed to establish that they can also have great matches while telling the story, and that didn't happen. And now, uh, again, it's just Sexy Boy Kento, SBK. It's just a lot of heat on him right now. And it's a little it's a little jarring to see because I feel like the only time we see this level of dominance, and it's an odd comparison to make, but, you know, we've seen Shingo run through guys in the past like a gym class bully, SBK is, I guess, like the evil class clown, but he, he's presented with such dominance that is so forceful and, and established as such a pest and a thorn in Dragon Kid's side that it's it's a little exhausting. I I would almost liken it is that he, uh, in high school, we had a kid, like my high school was mainly a baseball high school. Like most, like we had like one person from football whom, made it to Kansas State, but if you're going from a Texas high school to Kansas State, that tells you where you are really in football, but it was a baseball high school, and there was a kid who came in that was throwing 90 already. He signed to Rice, and the only reason why he signed was he knew that, like, well, I'm go- uh, there's no way they're going to draft me in the first few rounds. I'm going to go and do two years of college ball, and then I'm going to go play, then I'll go get redrafted, and that happened to him. He ended up in the uh, Blue Jays org, but the thing is, is that, like, this kid was, like, so good at this and was like so smart he was kind of like this prodigy that like it's not that like people like he like walked on water but it was one of those things that he could get away with this and he could be like a shithead and he was kind of a shithead person because he knew like those kind of things 
Hio's kind of that equivalent of like the 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 just like ahead of his time athlete who's just let it go to his head. And I kind of like that character. And it's a different kind of bent from the Shingo one. Because like the Shingo one, like that's a completely apt analogy there. I just kind of like how SBK has turned this on ahead. And, and that's what makes this feud so frustrating is because like SB Kento should be like one of the more compelling people in this company. But like at this moment, I'm like, all right, I'm built up. I want to see this cage match. You need to stop selling me on this cage match. Like, let's see what what could happen in the cage. Yeah. So that is a, a, an unfortunate kind of cloud hanging over this main event angle but luckily at least for me there was a bunch of other stuff that i liked on the show yeah so i know you dm'd me before i watched this it, it was a weekend with me so i didn't get a chance to watch this stuff until last night and this morning but kz versus bokudamo dragon that was a very interesting matchup that i know that you have some pretty deep thoughts on well i, I will i'll play spoiler right now and say this wasn't even my favite match of the weekend uh it Okay. Uh, yeah, there, there's. Actually, I thought this one was your favorite. There's actually something on this show that I ended up liking more, but oh my god! I mean, it's it's not victory lap worthy, but I, I told people throughout the entire masked Bocaltimo portion, I said this guy is one shot put slam away from reminding everybody that he is capable of being one of the best wrestlers in the world. And sure enough, he drops the shtick. He has this straight ahead wrestling match with KZ. And I thought it was unbelievable. I went three and three quarters with this match. I thought it was so entertaining. And more importantly, again, we dealt with sleazy Big R Shimizu for the longest time. And I think when he was in that role, he lost his fire. To an extent, he lost his drive. And it became very apparent. You see him here, and it's unfortunate that he's still wearing the, the Ultimo costume, but without the mask, because it... I think it diminishes the effectiveness of it a little bit, but watching Shimizu with uh, grown out hair, but not the sleazy mullet he had going. He he had kind of a chili bowl working for him. <laughs> well, but watching him where uh, you, you know, his role and it's clear, you can see his face. Oh my God. The fire he showed in this match. This is why I loved big R Shimizu. This is why he got over with me in the first place. And he just happened to be in the ring with KZ, who, uh, as with King of Gate coming up, I have to sit down and seriously think about what KZ's next step is because I, I think, I think he could be in for a really big summer. And quite honestly, his performance warrants it. This was a terrific match with an incredible, incredible finishing stretch where you had Shimizu. It's funny, like the first time he did the Lamahi Strawl, it got like a laugh. It was like a, a punchline almost. Now he does the Lamahi Stroll flawlessly. Like he's a trained yeah. luchador and he busted one out here for a crazy near fall. KZ kicks out. He hits the sky to schoolboy. That gets a crazy near fall. And then KZ does that Cobra twist submission and Shimizu fights and fights and fights and he finally taps out. This was this was the type of fun match that, you know, Mike and I have complained a lot about these Fukuoka shows it's because they don't have matches like this where I could just sit down and get lost in this match. It's it, not a match that's on my spreadsheet, certainly not a match that I'm going to think about for match of the year contenders. But if I was making, uh, you know, come December, a best of 2021 Dragon Gate playlist, this is a match that would be on there. I think everyone should make some time to watch it. Yeah, I, I went three and a half on it, so we weren't too far. I guess now that I, our match of the week, and it's probably the same match now that you mentioned this, because I thought this would be it. Uh, the thing that, that got me in this match was as soon as the mask, like they had goofed around about his mask for a little bit, but as soon as the mask came off and they started going, this was a rather like hard hitting and stiff yes. affair that like these two guys really like went for it, and it was a lot of fun here and then the way that they really heated everything up moving into the spider twist was just excellent stuff like this is the match that like i go three and a half stars this i i put this match i need to update my list but I put my lot that this match on my like my recommendations list like this is why this i have recommendations list is for something like this match because fukuoka does not usually have great matches it's usually kind of dead people going through the motions but KZ and Bukudamo, I mean, I like the fact that Bukudamo has kept some of the Ultimo trappings and, you know, has a La Maestral. I mean, 
gives him a flash pen. Everyone in this, a lot of people in this company have flash pens, and he never had one. And it's a very logical one, and I dig that he had it. And, you know, this was an absolute blast. Like, it was, with the exception of the main event, the longest match on the show. Like, they gave this, they gave everything here a good amount of time. Fukuoka is not working under any sort of state of emergency here. But, like, they definitely gave this thing time to breathe, and it breathed, and it breathed in a way that, breathe, that's great English. But it, <laughs> it like, it, it, it was able to, like, tell out a, a strong story between these two. And I feel like that that kind of made that somewhat special. Mike, we'll see where Shimizu ends up at the end of the year. But if this is a guy who around Dangerous Gate, Gate of Destiny, even even Gate of Origin, which is a smaller show, albeit a featured show, if this is a guy that finds himself challenging for the Dream Gate, I think we're really going to look back at the past year of him losing the cage match, doing the gimmick change, and then coming out of it seemingly refocused, and I and I use the term a lot of, of calibration, seemingly recalibrated in yeah. the way he's he's not only approaching his matches, but the way that the fans are reacting to him. It seemed like a total character reset. And if this is a guy that finds himself at the top of the card towards the end of the year, uh, we are going to have to go back and really give Dragon Gate credit for what they have done with Shimizu, because he was a guy that for so long was bubbling on the surface and had all of this potential, what I thought was main event potential. And then he spent that year in R.E.D. where, you know, he wasn't he wasn't bad by any means. I mean, he was a, a terrific Open the Twin Gate champion, but it, we we found his ceiling. We, we suddenly knew what he was, and it wasn't quite, at least in my mind, what I thought he could be. But he's been given this new life, unmasked, and I'm really excited at the possibilities because as I will continue to reiterate, pound for pound, one of the best wrestlers on the roster. I truly believe that. And, and this was more evidence of that. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's going to be interesting because, you know, nothing is settled in the unit landscape. I don't think that Shimizu will come out of this being a one here. But, you know, the fact that he might be an even more believable Dreamgate challenger coming out of that, like that, that's a... That's the you got to tip your proverbial hat to to to, to all the uh, mysterious matchmakers in Kobe if they pulled this off in the way that like now that you've laid it out for me like I could totally see that happening and that's incredibly fascinating. Yeah, just compared to I I, I think if you know even if he loses his hair in that was September, it it just. It was a character reset, but it wasn't enough. There was still a little bit too much of the old Shimizu there, and they gave this time. And we said, you know, this Bukaltimo character would run its course. It would likely be done by Dead or Alive. It's likely going to finish up at Dead or Alive. And it's just, it's starting to become an incredibly satisfying story. And I really like the potential that this has, even if, you know, he's a Twin Gate champion or, you know, a strong a strong uh, a kingpin of a Triangle Gate team. I think that's a win. But from what I saw in this match, the fire that he showed and the reminder that he is as good of a wrestler as he is, I, I am once again thinking like, man, Shimizu in the main event scene. I could see that. I can really buy that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's going to be interesting to see how that all will play off and the last match I wanted to touch on case and I have a feeling now that with, with with like this very bad build that we've done might end up being your match of the weekend as well. It was mine. It was the main event, the masquerade versus RED tag and an interesting kind of facet they did in this match case, in my opinion. Uh, uh, what the fuck? BB Hulk turned the clock back to 2010 in this match. I, I mean, were you as impressed <laughs> by him as I was? Cause I Hulk, I thought was like the best guy in this match. Oh, he, here's the interesting thing. I thought the interesting thing about this match was the fact that they had Masquerade dominate for like the first four or five minutes, and then Kakuda just laid people out. But so, Hulk so was great. Kakuda Kuk- well. did rip. I was so impressed though by BB Hulk, and it's once again you look at who's in this match. It's BB Hulk and it's Kota Minora, and I don't know what their relationship is, but I am dying to know because since August of last year, every time these guys get in the ring together. Hulk is so giving and works so hard when he's in the ring with Minora. It's it's unbelievable to me. It's something that I don't even know of another comparison because, you know, you and I, are, I think, are probably higher on Hulk in his current stage than most people, but it's not like we're thrilled seeing BB right. Hulk all the time. But when he's in the ring with Minora, 
He looks five years younger. It's every single time these guys are together. I I'm really bummed. They're on the same block for King of Gate, but their singles match is not going to make TV. And that is a real bummer because I would just like to see what that looks like given their interactions in the tag matches. Uh, but yes, this was my match of the weekend. Four stars from me. Uh, Minora and Hulk were tremendous and Kakuta down the stretch with the exception of the fact that this is the second show in a row where Kakuta has kind of screwed up the hand of God Lariat, and that is... He goes low. Yeah, it's weirdly concerning. I, I, I don't love that, just given who he is in his sort of unestablished position going into the biggest match of his life. I would like to see him nail the finisher. That's something that I think we can work on going forward. But he ended up picking Minora up the second <laughs> the second hand of God he hit looked like it sucked. He hit Minora so hard with that Lariat. And <laughs> and what you end up with is a four star match to close out the first Fukuoka show. Yeah, I, I was four flat as well. Uh, I thought that Kuzen and, Sh and Shun had some truly exceptional uh face offs here. I think it's something that, you know, it, it, it's they wouldn't have had a huge amount of time interacting with each other because uh, other than, you know, I don't know how long Kakuta was in Kobe in the dojo, but I mean, Shun was gone, gone last December, doesn't come back until, until November. So like we're talking about someone that has only had five months really to build up some chemistry. So I was really kind of zeroed in on that because we didn't get the face off at Corican because of the COVID situation. So now we got that, and I thought that it was really remarkable seeing, like, all right, these two guys is like the two tallest guys on the roster, seeing them kind of face off like that. I thought that that was really kind of rad there, and just the way that he put people down and just completely, you know, just dealt with business. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm vamping a little bit here because I think, because I thought I saw somewhere that there's a pile driver that uh, he's now using as a move as well, but I cannot find it right Yes, now. let me, uh, yes, I, I know the tweet you're talking about. It's just going to take me a second to find the tweet, but but at uh, Memorial Gate, that was what Kakuta used to beat Ben K, and I cannot think of this Twitter right. user's name. I, I, I know exactly who tweeted it, and I can't think of this guy's name. Uh, but I, I will say about this match, yeah, it's, it's another one of those things, you know, we've been talking a lot off the air about the upcoming Dragon Gate and MLW partnership. And by the way, if you follow Davey Richards on Twitter, Davey Richards did retweet the MLW Dragon Gate hype video today, and I am all about that life. Uh, but it's just... <laughs> once... did we, we, I, I mean, they were in Fukuoka Hakata this week. Okay? <laughs> so I wonder if there's some, some memories that they might have of Davey Richards' one storyline. Uh, it, it, it rocks so much. Uh so th there's a lot to like here, but my, my point bringing up the MLW thing is that I really think the chemistry that these guys have, your A and your B RED team against Masquerade in any form is a match that I think would make a huge, huge imprint in the United States. And and to be clear, the hip hop Kakuta finisher is apparently called, and this comes from at Lorenzo Music Rec on Twitter the bottoms up pile driver. <laughs> I, are we, I, are we certain that's real? Because if that is, they are they are curbing on the square on a level I've not anticipated. You know, look, I, well, I mean, you've seen his body. What are you going to deny him that he's got I, I, these thunder thighs? I mean, there's a part of me that's very intrigued by what gear. Uh, Hip hop Kakuda might be wearing it on May fifth case. You think he's because... gonna go with smaller tights for the biggest match of his life? No case, but the one thing I'll say about hip hop Kakuda is he probably underscans the importance of grooming. And support for Open the Voice Gate is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's blow the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience manscaped is trusted by over two million men worldwide we have an exclu exclusive offer for our listeners 20 percent off and free shipping with the promo code otvg at manscaped.com and you know for someone like hip-hop kakuda he he has to make sure everything's in control right case mike that's right and not only does hip-hop kakuda have to make sure that everything is control but but we 
Mike Spears and Case Love, the Up in the Voice Gate podcast, we have to make sure everything is in control. Yes, it was 33 degrees here in Chicago today, but summer is right around the corner. And you know what summer means. It means horniness can strike at any moment. And when horniness strikes, you have to be prepared. That's why Manscaped hooked us up with the per- Perfect Package 3.0 kit. Manscaped has created the best ball hair trimmer ever, the Lawn Mower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. For a long time in life, I was doing what we called bicking my boys, just taking a razor down there and having at it. But now I feel confident, and more importantly, I feel safe when I'm shaving my boys with the Lawnmower 3.0. Yeah, and the great thing about the Perfect Package 3.0 is it comes with everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. It has the Crop Preserver, which is an anti chafing ball deodorant and, and moisturizer. And, you know, I live in the South. I, I, I used to live in Miami where it was 85 degrees and 80% humidity all day. And, you know, deodorant, you know, antiperspirant, it's not just for your armpits. So, you know, they, they look out for us with that as well. Then they also have the Crop Reviver, which is something that you use post and it helps out a, a, a good deal there. So just making sure that they, they get you all covered there with Manscaped. Just trim that junk of yours. Get two per, get 20% off with free shipping with the promo code OTVG at Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code OTVG at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off of free shipping at Manscaped.com and use promo code OTVG. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Mike, you want a, a quick case low dating story? Oh, uh, I, I live for these things. <laughs> well, well, what do you got for me? This this is a recent one. This uh this happened. Well, we're recording this on a Tuesday. This happened uh, last Friday. Um, I'm on the dating app Hinge. Uh, I'm half vaccinated, but I just hit a point where I was like, you know what? I've I, I've got to get back out there. I get my second vaccine in in just a few days. I, but I I can't wait. I I want to get back out there. Match with a woman. Very cute. Uh, it just uh, hit a lot of the boxes that I like. Fun glasses, cool tattoos, nice sense of style. Um, we talked for a few days. We talked a lot about uh, a lot about books because uh, you know I I do a fancy a nice book here and there. We talked a lot about music, uh, which her music taste was not my thing, but I could respect it. a lot of like '60s folk in there stuff that I I don't like hippies and so uh, too, too much Donovan, too much Donovan for I, your, I had for your a, life. I had a roommate that loved Donovan. That is a true story. Uh, that that and I, I bet my best friend I lived with for a while loves Donovan. I don't necessarily understand it, but more power to him. Uh, but you know, talked to this girl for a few days. Thought she was very funny. I she had takes. That's what I liked. It was easy to have a conversation with her on a dating app because whatever topic I had, she had a take for it. So I asked her. I said, you know, well, you know, we've been talking for a few days now. Do you want to hang out this weekend? And, and she says, you know, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be fun. What do you want to do? Uh, she had already established in the conversation that she she didn't really want to go to a park. She doesn't really like walking around doing nothing. Uh, she was fully vaccinated. I am half vaccinated. I told her I don't really want to be in an indoors public place until I'm fully vaccinated. So I can't, I can't take you out to eat, but, and I know this sounds extreme, but would you like to come over to my apartment? We can watch a movie. We can hang out. It'll be fine. I I live alone. I'm telling you that in advance, but you can still come over to my apartment. You're more than welcome here. Um, She tells me she has a rule against not going to strange men apartments, which by the way, fair rule, good idea. I would recommend that. She says, "I, I typically don't go over to strange guys apartments, but you seem to be fine. Yes, we can do that. Um, I say, great. We talk about what movie we're going to watch. Um, and then we end the conversation the night before the date. And she says, you just have to promise me one thing. I say, what's that? <laughs> and she says, you have to promise you're not going to try to fuck me when I'm over in your apartment tomorrow. And I say, great. Makes my life easier. I don't even want that on the table. I don't even want to think about that. Thank you for being up front. It, the, the thought process of I'm going to go on a date with this guy, but he has to promise he's not going to fuck me before I, I before I go over to his place. Very funny to me. Um, so I'm cleaning my apartment the, the day of, and uh, at some point I look up on my wall and I realize, oh, that's right. Two weeks ago, I paid international shipping prices to get a Grand Hamada poster shipped to my apartment, and that is now on my wall. And I think, well, God, am I, am I going to take this down? I, I've got it pretty firmly established on this wall. And I said, no, I'm going to leave it up. And I left it up, and when she came in, I said, I apologize for the decor. I know it looked like a 12-year-old boy's bedroom, but this is my apartment. This is where I live, and I'm going to decorate it how I want. 
we proceeded to spend hours, literally three and a half hours, talking in my apartment, vibrant conversation, had a really, really nice time. Have not heard from her since. She unmatched with me on Hinge today. I am blaming it on the Grand Hamada poster. I, I, I mean, sometimes people are a kind to IDX people. <laughs> She did mention she had a, a, an affinity for Takamichi Noku, now that you say it. I mean, I, I was expecting, you know, maybe some uh, Dick Togo, maybe Shiryu, but, you know... No, specifically Takamichi not Dick Togo. That was firmly established in this conversation. She was not interested in Dick Togo. And quite honestly, that is a policy going forward that I... Because I, I, you know, there's like a weird... We talked about being straight edge at the start of the show. The song um, Out of Step by Minor Thread is, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't fuck. And there was a, a large conversation in the straight edge community when that song came out of like, well, is Ian Mackay preaching abstinence? Like, what's his deal? And and his point was, no, I'm just very against the hypersexualization of society. And I personally don't partake in casual sex. Now, I don't either, but that's because I host a Japanese wrestling podcast, so I don't necessarily have the opportunity uh, to commit those acts, but I fall in line with the same thing. Like, I was looking to take this girl out on a date. I just don't know what to do because we're in a pandemic and I don't know where to go, uh, but I really, really like the logic of, I will come over to your apartment, you just have to not fuck me, and for me, it calmed me down, it eased my anxiety immediately, and uh, one of these days, I will get a second date with someone. I'm I, I, I mean, like, of course, my reaction to either comments is, and, and like, I was like, my, my mind says, like, it's a really sad state that, like, that has to be, like, implicit. <laughs> all, of her, all of her reasoning, I just want to make it abundantly clear. Completely justified. Logical. The right oh, thing to do. Don't yes. go over to strangers' apartments. Make sure to establish rules and boundaries before you get over there if you do. I completely Absolutely. respect her. Quite honestly, made me more calm. I understood what the situation was going to be, and I enjoyed it. I just didn't get the follow-up, which is a bummer because I thought we had a nice time. You know, it's it, 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 it's a world out there. That's all. <laughs> I, 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 it, it, I mean... I use the phrase fucking, and now Mike is very nervous with what to say. He does have a brand to uphold. It's just that no one should care about... <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. People don't need to know well, what what I'm horny about, or if I choose to be horny or not. I just think that it's just not necessary, you know. That that there is. Uh, I know that you are not as much of a video gamer, but there is a guy named um, his name uh, Brian David Gordon. He used to work for Polygon, who sort of like a fan thing, and like he made it very implicitly clear because he worked at the website that I know you've probably heard of him, but the McElroy Brothers. Okay, yeah. And they, and, and, and the, that community has some like very parasocial like fixations and like he got out in front of it. It's like, hi, you can't tell me what to do. You, you're not my friend. You are a viewer. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know. Maybe my take of that is like, I just don't, ah, I, it, it's just something that like, I try not to cuss on air, even though I curse like a sailor off air. I don't know. It's just something that, and, and you know me, the second I say something, I immediately commit to this and write it until it's, it's train crash. You know, like I, I I'm stuck. At this point, I think this is a good balance. Uh, I, I enjoy <laughs> that we're at a point in the show where I can share some case low lore, and I enjoy Mike Homer Simpson backpedaling into the bushes as soon as I tell those stories. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it, it's also because, like, all right, I, I'll bring up that this, this is neither here nor there, but you shared some lore, and since it's four twenty, I'll share this lore. <laughs> So Mike was at Joey Janela's spring break. Now go ahead, Mike. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. This was like four or five years ago. Ago, this was like pretty soon after I moved up to the Upstate, and I met someone on a dating website. I think it was OK Cupid at the time. I met her on OK Cupid, and we were talking about stuff, talking about comedy. Of course, at, at a certain point, I feel like in a lot of people's lives, comedy is not just a uh, something they enjoy; it becomes a personality trait that they are comedy people. <laughs> Uh, Casey, I, unf you know, I unfortunately know this very well. Oh yeah, like this, and she and she was like, "Yeah, you know, like there's an open mic here, and you know, I don't really do stand up." And I'm like, "You know what? I've done. I I don't really do comedy either. I have family who are involved in the comedy community." And she was like, "Yeah, so like, let's do this for like an open day. It's it's at a coffee shop. It's at a coffee shop that's like notably run by the Christian College in town. So like, there wasn't like we were drinking any of this." But she's like. But, you know, beforehand, do you want to get high? And I was like, uh, and I was like, all right, I will hang out and do this. And it proceeded to have one of the most awkward dates of my life. And to the point of 
she went to the restroom in the middle of the set, uh, the open mic set in between acts, and the MC because she just completely was like because like you you know this case. Think about an open mic for a lot of places for unless you're a new person trying out, you're trying out new material, trying to get like the beats down and when you're la and when you want to have like laugh breaks and you're phrasing it's, right it's well, a, it's the equivalent of a house show match right yeah the the thing was that uh she was enjoying it so much that she was laughing at everything and throwing people off L- like noticeably like this was like a seven o'clock thing like it was not late and after that and she, the, the guy was like is is she okay it's like no yeah she's fine she's fine i think after that never talked to her never saw her again both of us kind of decided, you know what, this was a bad one. So, be careful on 420, everyone. If you're gonna go, high, if you're gonna get high and go on a blind date with someone to accommodate open mic, make sure that that. It, and, and here's the thing, it was her weed. It wasn't mine. Yeah, no this this is this is all on her. I, I should note that the the woman that I saw this past week, very into weed. Uh, let me know that multiple times was telling me stories about her on acid before, which I was not relating to at all. Uh, but you know, they're funny stories. I, I Can, enjoyed them. You, you don't have any opinions about microdosing case to get through your day. Look, I mean, the, I, I lived with three kids, my freshman year of college and two of them, one of them loved Donovan. The other two just so into acid just to like a, an honestly scary degree where I think about who they were in August of that year compared to May of that year. And I was like, Oh man, they got dumber. Like it's, it's hard to be around these guys because all we, it was freshman year of college. You don't have a ton sure. going on. So I, I, we had a DVR, we had cable that was paid for by the dorm and then we paid to have a DVR set up there. So what we would do is we would just have King of the Hill, the Simpsons and family guy and Bob's Burgers, all we would record this series. Whenever they aired on Adult Swim, we had them mm-hmm. stocked on the DVR. We also had Seinfeld, too. So every night we would come home, and uh, my roommate and I, who, who, you know, he's the one that likes Donovan, we would sit there and enjoy our comedy. The other two would either smoke an ungodly amount of weed, or every once in a while would just be like, no, we're just going to trip out tonight and, you know, watch King of the Hill or whatever. And, I'm glad I lived in that environment because I was so I was so not around that in high school that this very quickly ex, it was like exposure therapy. I was like, okay, I have to be around these guys now. One of them, this is my favorite story from college, and we'll talk about Fukuoka in a second, but I, I like this story. Uh one of my roommates started dating a girl that lived across the hall from us, like literally fifteen steps from our dorm to her dorm. We went home for Thanksgiving break uh, that semester, and when we came back all of her stuff was in our dorm. She had moved right. in to a, a, our our place over Thanksgiving break, and we were like, "Yo, like, like it's not a big deal, but like, why?" And he was like, "Well, you know, she's she's fighting with her with her roommate. She can't live there. She's gonna live with us." It's like, "Yeah, but you didn't really run that by us." And like, we hear you guys just in, interacting, to say the least, a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe run that by us. Uh, so she was living with us for about two months, and then one day. They went to the Chicago Zoo. It was her first time doing acid. She had done it with her boyfriend, my roommate. And as the story goes, as the story was told to me, my roommate, who was on acid, saw a monkey in a cage at the zoo. And he said, that is me in this relationship. I need to get out of this right now. He broke up with his girlfriend at the zoo, came back to our dorm room, told us the story and as he was telling us the story it was our other roommate's birthday and he got a birthday cake delivered at that exact moment and we all <laughs> had cake and celebrated this dude breaking up with his girlfriend and I don't think I've been happy since wow that's hey Mike <laughs> that's college for you no 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 that's very much like you, you you would think that like an age gap like this no no I had a roommate whose whose girlfriend moved in and they ended up getting married, but it was one of those things. Where like, guys, come on, just give me a. <laughs> like, luckily, this wasn't like the first week of school. This was like it wasn't like Thanksgiving where you're like still trying to make like friendships. Yeah, you, know, you can't. Yeah, this be, was like, really early to insanely. have another human move in. Yeah, yeah, and especially like at that age there as well. You're just like, oh my god, well, like, and of course it played out that way. However, you know. To microdo or, or I, I I don't know if they were microdose, but taking acid and going to the zoo and and then using it as a way to break up with your girlfriend <laughs> that that's gonna be a story not just for like you're telling now that's gonna be like 
I, I mean, I feel for the woman because it's like, yeah, you're having your first drug experience of a certain type with your boyfriend you think he, you trust. And then he dumps you because he sees a monkey <laughs> because he's tripping on acid. And, and, and then he goes back to his room, of which you were living and you were going to have to move out in. Oh, and she like w- like came into our room just like crying. It was just like taking her stuff out one by one. It was like this prolonged process. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. It's like, well, we're like, I was not a fan of her. I did not like that she was living with us. And I was not certainly not going to assist help her move stuff out. She had to walk by us since we were having a conversation and every three minutes this girl was just crying walking by us and taking a box of stuff and taking another box of stuff uh and that is essentially freshman year of college summed up in a nutshell man and you're having cake it was the cake already done this time i'm sorry i'm fixating on the cake the cake to so, me is the funniest so it thing was, it was a king cake um all right, it, yeah. So who got the baby? Did did did, did the dumper get the get the uh, the, I the think king the, baby the, out of this? The birthday kid got the baby, so it worked out. Oh, nicely. that's nice. Um, that's nice. But it was. I mean, I'm someone that has awful dietary habits. I consume a lot of sugar, and I'm just lucky to have a uh, lucky to have a metabolism that keeps me somewhat in shape, somewhat kind of healthy. But I remember having that king cake, and I I don't think I had ever consumed that much sugar in a short time period and I started I started bouncing off the walls and that stuff typically doesn't affect me but it was just it was just a really intense 45 minutes a lot happened in a very short amount of time I would say so I would say so so the second uh Fukuoka show, <laughs> I, I I had a I had a nice way that I was like oh I see how we're gonna segue into the manscape ad no way to segue out of dumping and eating cake cake uh king cake here uh had more attendance um uh, uh, any big takeaways for our run through the card and we could talk about what we liked on it? No, just that the building looked very full and then I've, I've, I've got a few matches here that I liked as well. Yeah, so this had 325, which I feel like that's their biggest attendance there since COVID hit. But opener, uh, Masquerade versus Natural Vibes, Shun Skywalker, Kota Minora, Jason Lee, KZ, Susumi, Yokosuka, Kiki Horiguchi. Jason Lee got the win with a maximum driver in 11 minutes and 46 seconds. And the second match, Punch Tomaga and UT in the singles match, 15 minute time limit draw. Uh, second, the third match is an unaffiliated team of Ultimo Dragon and Rio Saito versus the high end team of Big Ben K and Dragon Kid. Ben K pinned Saito after a spear. Eight man unaffiliated tag. Uh, one side was Masaki Mochizuki, Takashi Yoshida, Bukudamo Dragon, and Ho Ho Loon. Go ho ho! You you got match four on a Fukuoka show versus the RED team at BB Hulk, Kaido Ishida, Kazuma Sakamoto, and Diamante. Match five, Naruki Doing Gamma versus Kai and SB Kento. Kai got pinned after an accidental cane shot by SBK by Naruki Doi. And then the main event as part of Kakatora's kind of trial series. This time it was with high end Yamato and Keisuke Akuda versus the RED team of Eita, Hip Hop Kakuta, and Hio. Kagatora got the win with the Gura Makakari in 14 minutes and 33 seconds. I really like this show. There's actually, there's quite a bit that I want to talk about here, and I want to start with the opening match. We saw Jason Lee survive multiple backslide from heaven attempts, and then he ended up pinning, he ended up pinning Genki Horiguchi with the maximum driver. What do we think about Lee's current role? Do we think a title match is in line for him sometime soon? Not only do I think a title match is on the line for him soon, I think he's going to show up like right after uh, Keisuke Akuda puts out Tomonaga and challenge for the Brave Gate at Dead or Alive. I think that that's going to be a match on that card. So I-, I agree with you, but I disagree with you. I do think Lee is in line for a title shot, but I look back at the April 9th Cork and Hall show, where the opening match was Shun Skywalker and Jason Lee against Susumu Yokosuka and UT, where Jason Lee pinned Yokosuka. Okay. And I start thinking, well, you know, Jason Lee, Coach Minora, and La Estrella, they're going to need ma- a match on this show. There's not a Triangle Gate match booked yet. Uh, would you complain at the prospect of Lee, Minora, and Estrella versus KZ, Yokosuka, and Horiguchi? Oh, not at all. I think that that's actually a better idea because then at that time you'll have ut and takeda kame to do something else on the undercard oh yes that is that that is true because we do get kame back this week 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like your idea more than I than mine. So it, we're going to use your idea I, from I, now I on. I think I mean Ashita versus, or I'm sorry, not Ashita. If if Lee versus Akuda happens, I'm not going to complain by any means. But two direct falls over natural vibes members and, and natural vibe natural vibes members that weren't UT. That mm -hmm. leads me to think he's getting a triangle gate shot. No, I, I think that's entirely fair. And, you know, this was my match of the show. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, especially, like, Susumu and Jason have excellent chemistry together, with Susumu actually playing open Rudo for the first time in a long time uh, towards Jason Lee. And I really enjoyed it. I went three and three quarters on this match. I, I am not that high. I, I like the main event quite a bit. Um, there, this, this was a... Other than... The match three that that Ben K yeah. and Dragon Kid versus Saito and Ultima. There was nothing there, but everything else on the show I I liked, and I thought there was some sort of value to it. Yeah, yeah. Like the only other match that I was like, all right, whatever, was match five. But that's for the reasons we talked about with the uh, preview match. You know, like it was a fine match. I went three flat on on Gamma and Doi versus Kai and SPK, but I just was like, all right, we're getting more build up there, but. You know, you would not think that a show with a Punch Tomonaga singles match that went 15-minute time limit draw with UT would be as good as it was. I love this match. I didn't think it was a great match, but I loved no. I loved what this was. And it's funny because I think I think 2015 case, this would have been his own personal hell, a 15-minute UT and, and Tomonaga match. But I've changed, Mike. I've grown as a person. And I have come to find out that UT is honestly one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. And I, I just love this, that Tamanaga yeah. is going in to this match with Akuda. He's woefully unprepared. He, I pray to God he gets destroyed. I, I don't, we don't need a, a banana peel win for Tamanaga, and I don't think that's going to happen. But he's going to be in the fight of his life against Kaisuke Akuda, and to prepare, he's getting stretched out by UT, and they're trading submissions, and it's this crazy <laughs> mat based match, like. God, this was fun, and they they I, I, they protected UT, and in turn, I don't think they hurt Tamanaga. I don't think he needed the win. The fifteen minute draw was fine for him, and they they kept UT's gimmick of being this crazy sort of Yave style grappler alive as well. Yeah, like this, like it's kind of become on brand for me to say like, oh, UT had himself a prime zone match basically. But this is like UT is my favorite worker in the company right now. I, it, over the last like year or two years really dating back to 19 or dating back to late 2018 into 2019 and then losing all that time. He's the person whose ring style like interests me the most. And the two of them had like a really solid, uh, really solid match. And it kind of played off the fact that, uh, as you said, Punch Omaga is so out of his depth this match. He caught Okuda here and he kept on saying like he could fight Okuda, he could fight Okuda. He got his ass headed into him each and every time. And then when Okuda kind of pitied him, he got the win there and was able to do that. Now he realized, oh, crap, I need to get myself prepared. And, you know, fa facing the mini maestro is a great way to do so. And it was a really compelling 15-minute match. I would did not, I don't think this makes, this would not make your list of Punch Tomonaga four-star matches. But, you know, it was a healthy three and a quarter. No, it, it would not make the list of Punch Tomonaga four-star matches. We did a show... Back in August, I think we, I, I think I have the date right. I think we were reviewing the August 22nd Dragon Gate show, and I went down the list of literally every great punch Tamanaga match there's ever been, which was a, not a lot, it, it, not a lot, but more than you would think. I think that's a fair right. way of putting it. Um, this would not make that list, but similar to Shimizu versus KZ from the first show, although this wasn't as good, this was just one of those fun matches that, you know, only the hardcores are going to watch this show. I get that, uh, you know, even a lot of the people that are going to watch Dead or Alive aren't going to pay attention to this double shot in Fukuoka, but I, I wish they would because I think they would get enjoyment out of matches like this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm with you on that. Um, the other match that, like, I mean, you mentioned it, uh, the main event was a whole lot of fun, and we can start speculating again. We saw how great Kagatora was as Dance Hashimoto, but him and High End fit. Like, he fits in a lot of places, and that's what makes him so frustrating, right? Yeah, let me quickly make a note that after the fourth match, that eight-man tag that had Ho-Ho Loon in it, uh, Ashida pinned Yoshida, or I submitted him, rather, with the ankle hold, and then oh, yeah. Ashida and Sakamoto challenged Yoshida and Mochizuki for the Twin Gate belts. That'll take place at Dead or Alive. What a Twin Gate match. I mean, that the, the, the Mochizuki-Ashida interactions in that match were ridiculous, and I think the last time... 
those two had a featured match with one another, I think you have to go back to that final gate, which I think was 2016, where you yeah. did Mochi Fuji versus Ashida and Yamamura, and uh, Ashida and Yamamura almost died in that match. <laughs> I mean, it was like, I've seen Mochizuki and Fuji beat people up before, but even this was like, oh, oh my God. Like, oh no. Y'all are no. going a little hard here. <laughs> do, do, do they owe you money or something <laughs> like that? But no, like, I'm really stoked for this. Thanks for bringing this up so we didn't gloss over it. The finish in this this match four where uh Ashida had him down the ankle hold and then Kazma was in Yoshida's face basically cackling at him the entire time was such a cool image there like w- w- we've opined about Kazma Sakamoto and Kaido Ishida but never thought about them as a twin gate team and I kind of like it a whole lot oh it's, assholes. it's so fresh because you know because Ashida was brave gate champion for a year we haven't seen him in a twin gate match since the end of 2019 we obviously had sakamoto and hulk teaming for a long time and and while i've been urging dragon gate to freshen up the twin gate division a little bit it might sound hypocritical to say uh, that i enjoy a team that sakamoto is still involved with and challenging for the title but to me there is such a dramatic face left with sakamoto now teaming with ashida and, and I say that as someone that just complimented bb hulk for his effort in the first fukuoka show but mm-hmm. but no that 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 match Ah, man, I I really, really like this Dead or Alive card so far, and I I think it's only going to get better once we land on uh, the Triangle Gate match, the Brave Gate match, or or both. I don't know if they're going to do both titles on that show or not, but yeah, there's a lot to like there, and there's a lot to like with Kagatora, who I owe an apology to, because a few weeks ago, about a month ago now, we came on here and ripped on him. I mean, we we said, you know, this is this is a guy that honestly would be better suited in the All Japan Juniors division, that his time in Dragon Gate has run its course, he doesn't really fit in anywhere, and while we enjoy the memories that we have with him, if he left tomorrow, I, I don't know if we'd miss him. And in true Kagatora form, just as he's done his entire career, as soon as he was given something to do, as soon as he had something he could sink his teeth into... He has excelled in that role. I thought he was a ton of fun as Dance Hashimoto and Natural Vibes. Here as just Kagatora and High End, I don't think he missed a beat. I think he could team with Yamato and Akuda on every show going forward, and I wouldn't bat an eye. And plus, on this Kobe Sambo Hall show this week, he will be bridge book Kagatora teaming with the heel RED side, which I did not think they were going to do in this storyline where Kagatora is trying out every unit until he decides which one he wants to be in. I assumed he would team with the baby faces and choose from them. I think it's really cool that he's also going to be teaming with the heels. Yeah. And I, I don't know. There's something in translation that I'm missing with bridge book. I'm just imagining that he really likes playing contract bridge. I was going to ask you, I, I certainly have not seen any reasoning why that is the name. No, no, no. But like it works really well. And the, the, the thing about this match that really did this to me, and this will be a old kind of on-brand thing, Hio kind of was the glue to this match. Like, he was so good in this and played off everyone so well, and he was the person that, of course, would, would eat the fall, but he was the person that would eat the fall, but basically was the connective t- tissue between, like, the this tag team and a guy who's trying out to join the tag team. And then you don't get a lot of uh, Eita, Kakuta, and Hio uh, trios, but we're gonna get a we're gonna get a bunch of them because of the lead up to Dead or Alive. But just kind of, I feel like he tied the room together. I really uh, liked Kakuta on these two shows. I really liked Yamato and Kakuta in this match. I thought they worked really well together, and that's yeah. kind of one of those things to have in the back of your mind. May twenty second in Hokkaido, one of the King of Gate shows that we'll get. We have Yamato versus Kakuta in a singles match, and that's, I mean, God, that, that, that's one of those that could deliver to a very high degree. Yeah, that seems pretty spicy now that you bring that up. Uh, any more thoughts about this before we get into the show that will have Bridge Book Kagatora? Fun shows. Uh, you know, Mike and I don't typically have a ton to say about Fukuoka, but I, I really enjoyed these, and if you have the time, I would at least parse through the matches we talked about. Yeah, I mean... It's we're coming up in the last week of the month, you know. There's going to be two other shows on the network. These two shows combined, you can watch them in three hours if you're looking for stuff. And there's and there's some gold in these shows, which is something we can't always say about Fukuoka shows and double shots. But we are returning, looking ahead 
on the 22nd, so on Thursday, to Kobe Sambo Hall, the friendly confines for Gate of Passion 2021. It'll be on the network live, 6.30 p.m. Japanese Standard Time. That's 4.30 for those on the East Coast. Uh, running down the card, opening match is Takedo Kame. Comeback match, KZ and Susumi Yokosuka with Takedo Kame versus BB Hulk, Kazuma Sakamoto, and Hyo. They will reveal his new ring gear, and they've teased that he'll be getting a name change. So that will be coming up ahead. No, no one in this class has kept their their actual name, which I find is kind of funny. But then we have match two, Don Fuji and Jason Lee versus Ginky Horiguchi and UT. Match three, high end of Yamato, Dragon Kid, and Binke versus R.E.D. of Kaido, Ishida, Kai, and S.B. Kento. You could probably guess what's going to happen there if you've listened to us like 30 minutes ago. And then match four is the Royal Sambo, Ultimo Dragon, Misaki Mochizuki, Takashi Yoshida, Ryo Saito, Bukudamo Dragon, Super Shisa, Konamawa, Chikawa, Sat- Sachi Okoboy, Gamma, Yosuke, Sam Maria, Problem Dragon, Hoho Loon, Diamante, and Daya Inferno. Match five, semi main event, open the Brave Gate match. This is a case gay Akuda, I believe, making his fourth defense case? Fourth or fifth? Oh, God. I think it's his I fourth. Think it's, I can double check. I think it's his fourth. The, it, yeah. But he's defending against Pancho Managa. And then the main event, Masquerade versus R.E.D. plus R.E.D. tryout. Shun Skywalker, Kota Minora, and La Estrella versus Eita, Hip Hop Kakuta, and Bridge Book Kagatora. To answer your question, yes, this will be his fourth defense. He had the Kaito Ishida rematch at World, the Kagatora match with Gekt at Final Gate 2020, and Gact. the Gact. Gact, of course. Do I need to, is there something I'm supposed to know there? I know he's like a big deal, but are they doing more stuff with that? Uh, Keisuke Akuda has a lot of important friends. That, that That's all that, that I would take from him. I mean, Gact is like a legitimate huge star. Like the, like the case of like big in Japan, but like... Gact is was for for a while like one of the biggest musicians in Japan. Like it was a legit big deal for Gact to be there. Yeah, so he had the Ashita match, the Kakatora match, and the Hiyo match at Champion Gate in Osaka this year. So this will be his fourth defense. I expect him to retain and quite honestly, a loaded Kobe Sambo Hall show. We're gonna get yeah. uh, uh, something big with the with the Kame return match. I'm nervous about his new name. I'm nervous about his, his his new ring gear only because I believe it's going to be overalls. And Jay uh, posted that picture of Taiji Ishimori during his Torimon X days, and it just struck fear into my soul. Um, <laughs> because yeah. uh, well, because Taiji Ishimori, I don't know if, if you guys are aware, but is no longer with the Dragon System and does not wish to speak about that time in his life. Uh, Don Fuji and Jason Lee versus Horiguchi and UT sounds like a ton of fun. I think I'm going to really like that match. And then Akuda versus Tamanaga, I, I trust Drangi to have this not overstay its welcome to have it be something worthwhile. And then that main event, it's another really solid Masquerade versus R.E.D. lineup. And given Kagatora's performance with Natural Vibes and with High End, I have no doubt that he's going to bring it here as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, revisiting the Royal Sambo, like like we did the Ichikawa storyline that was funny enough for me to be like, okay, let's see what's going to happen. I'm ready for what's going to happen now with the Royal Sambo match like if this is going to be a way of getting a lot of people on the shows then I'm sorry I think some people at this point in their career should be only brought out for big occasions like unless there's a a point to this I look at this and I look at the people involved in this match I'm like you know I would like to see Shisa versus Bukodomo Bukodomo with like the idea of now uh, Shimizu knows Lucha like that is fascinating to me. Like I, I, I could do without the trappings of that, but yeah. Well, th- this Lee. is the first one that really, uh, outside of Mochizuki, who I, I, I will still count as a big star, even if he is phased down in the booking right now. Well, I guess he's Twin Gate champion, so that's not true. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was stupid of me. He's Twin Gate champion. Um, it is the first one without any big stars in it. I, I Ultimo's in it. But yeah, yeah, but Ultimo's always in these. Um. Mm-hmm. It, there, but, like, you know, we've had Yamato, we've had Eito, we've had guys of that caliber that are in their prime in these matches before. I still don't mind it, because I, now that we know what these matches are, I don't think they're egregiously long. I think the Ichikawa stuff is funny, and, I mean, what are we... Is this better or worse than Ultimo, Mochizuki, and Yoshida versus Saito, Shimizu, and Sachi Hoko Boy, or whatever? You know, I, I feel like the quality right. is 
uh, the same, and the it, it's just it's something different that we don't see often. So I would rather have this than a, a meaningless six or eight man tag. No, I understand that, but yeah, I mean, really, like when I look at this thing, like match three, like I'm just ready for that match. So I'm just like, okay, like we're doing this on. I'll be interested in seeing if Ben and, and Ishida could kind of weave their way in, but given how the storylines have been, I think that they're just gonna kind of be left out on the outside a lot like how Ben K has been over the last 18 months and uh you know I had in my notes on the Fukuoka show when Ben K walked out and he had kind of like a I don't I don't know what like a military cut kind of it's not quite yeah. a mohawk but he had he had a crew cut he had a crew thank cut. you I have in my notes that is Ben K's look he needs to not change it and he showed up on social media two days ago with a completely shaven head honestly doesn't look bad at least i don't think so and it gives him less things to play with so hopefully we can see him look like the same human on a show to show <laughs> basis from here on out but i was so disappointed because he came out as like yes that has been k's look this is what he needs to look like this is the hair for him and that hair is now gone yeah 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 and it was something that like i didn't see anything about these shows until like you until i saw that photo and i was like something happened with ben k for him to have like a buzzed head because that means something different. And when people in Dragon Gate historically have had buzz their hair, it's because of an apuesa or because something bad happened. So, of course, I was like, do we know what happened here? I'm just assuming that this is... Benke is someone that just, you know, he just likes fucking with his body, for lack of better words. And, yeah, I, I wish we... I, th- that crew cut looked fine. But, like, the bald head, especially with someone with... Like, he doesn't have bad cauliflower ears, but his ears are kind of pronounced. It's just like, oh, okay. You're just being Binke right now, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's bizarre. Just the way he has changed his look so constantly, really, since his career began. But especially over the past year, it's just... It, I mean, he looks like a different human on every show. Since, uh, pretty much since, like, dropping the Dream Gate, he kind of just has decided, like... First, he, he decided to be like Mac from Always Sunny and gain mass. Then he lost mass and he looked more cut than ever before. Then he had like his hair and then, you know, he had his concussion and his hair came back and just looked, he looked very kind of just stilted and now he's bald for whatever reason. It's it's truly bizarre. I mean, at first it was the weight. Now it's the hair because I mean, I remember at King of Gate last year, this dude was uh, walking around like a like a professional bodybuilder. He looked like the the guy on the Gold's Gym T-shirt, and then he mm-hmm. dropped a bunch of weight, and then he put some of the weight back on and muscle. It's just, oh god, he's. I would like to spend some time with Ben K and, and learn who he is. A, a lot of questions for Ben K. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of questions, but yeah, as you said, like this is a pretty meaty. Sambo Hall show, so it'll be interesting to see, and it'll be interesting to see if they start setting up stuff for post dead or alive, knowing that, you know, I mean, they're in the, they'll be in the thick of it. So I mean, uh, they'll have to get stuff rolling for King of Gate and other stuff that's going to be the directions for the summer. It'll be interesting to see if this kind of starts that, and then of course, case on the twenty fourth from Higashi Osaka and Osaka Prefecture at the Higashi Osaka Gymnasium, it is the first of the Speed Star Final Countdown shows. It's in Higashi Osaka. That is Masato Yoshino's hometown. And we're getting the return of Masato Yoshino in his final hometown show. It's live on the network. They like having both his and Doi's uh, homecoming shows on the network. It's a 17 uh, o'clock Japanese Standard Time start. That's 5 p.m. Japanese Standard Time. That makes it 3 a.m. on the East Coast. And yeah, it's nice. Well, we were wondering if he was going to make it for these, but looks like that Yoshino is going to, at the very least, on these uh, final countdown shows, he's going to wrestle his final matches. Yeah, I'm really glad that he's going to be on these shows in a wrestling capacity. Now, it, it could be one of those deals where he takes two or three bumps and he gets stays out of the way and lets Doi and Yamato do the heavy lifting. If that's the case, I get it. I, I'm hoping we can see some form of vintage Masato Yoshino because it's not like he had a bad year in 2020. Uh, I I thought he was actually a particularly compelling wrestler for most of the year. And it's a bummer that we got to see uh, the beginning stage of what it looked like this year was going to look like for him with the Yoshino and Kamei versus Eita and Hio tag match from December 5th of last year, or after that the match, so Yoshino cut a promo. And it, first, it was a great match. And then after the match, Yoshino cut a promo and, and started 
uh, explaining that he was going to be giving his signature moves to the younger generation. And unfortunately, that hasn't become a thing. I think Kagatora did it with somebody. Um, do you remember who that was? Kagatora said that this is now your move, but I don't remember who he told it to. Oh, it was still Australia. Yes. Um, yeah. He so, got his version of the tarantula. That's right. So, you know, we've seen a little bit of it, but it's, you know, Kagatora as the, as the surrogate is not the same as Masato Yoshino handing his signature move over to somebody, which is a bummer. Uh, and this is obviously not the way that I want to see his career end. Luckily on this show and over at voiceofwrestling.com, as we get closer to Yoshino's retirement, we're going to have a lot of special Masato Yoshino coverage because he's uh, someone that deserves it. But I- I'm very glad that at least in some capacity, he'll be wrestling on this show. And quite frankly, I like the rest of the card too. Yeah, this is a very fun show. And yeah, it, it just like, I feel like it's worth talking up up top. The main event is Masato Yoshino, Naruki Doi, and Yamato versus Eita, BB, Hulk, and Hio. That's the four sixths of the big six right there. Like they're bringing that to Yoshino's hometown. Once again, they have Eita, who, you know, he, him and KZ are the people who've been elevated post the big six era into main eventers. And then Hio's there because. You know, you always need a ditch digger. Well, so, but, somebody, somebody's eating a Bakatari sliding kick, and it's not going to be Ata or BB Hulk, so that is why Hyo's <laughs> there. I, I, I'm the, 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 that finish does bad things for my character. Hyo can take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, yeah, go ahead. But it's just a big thing that this is happening, and it already gets the uh, gear spinning in my head on what might be his final match on 8-1. Like, now that we're seeing like this, and I had no doubt that they were going to do like these kind of things where they could for Masato Yoshino, but it's nice that they that now Penn has gone to paper and that's what we're getting for his final hometown match. Uh, let me be no fun for a second, because I've yeah. seen I've seen a few different people say this, and they're people that, you know, follow Drangi to some extent. Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm off. Maybe you disagree. And I, I just I have a, a negative outlook on things. But I keep on seeing people float out the idea that they're going to do Doi versus Yoshino in a singles match on the first of those Kobe World shows. Do you get the impression that they're going to that that is anything Dragon Gate would do? Uh, unlikely. I think it's unlikely for the company. I mean, first and foremost, it, it should be said, and it's something that I've done a poor job of. So I'll try to be more clear about this. So, uh, June 30 or July 31st that's Kobe World Pro Wrestling Festival that's the traditional Kobe World Show yes final 8-1 is Speed Star Final so two completely different shows this isn't two nights for Masato Yoshino this is Kobe World and then Masato Yoshino Retirement Show yeah you're right so you're I, right we, we've done a poor job of, of, of fully explaining that but I was thinking about that earlier this week actually when I was looking at the schedule yeah. ahead um I, I, I don't know I just don't I, I mean, it's cool if they do Doi versus Yoshino, but I, I kind of want to get that idea out of people's heads because I don't yeah. think that's... I, I think they'll probably tag on that yeah. first show. I wouldn't mind seeing one final speed muscle match, and then they'll do some combination of Doi, Yoshino, Ultimo, and, I mean, God, maybe a Washi, just given how, how good a friends Yoshino seems to be with him against yeah s- some combination of guys. I mean, it, it, the... I don't have a feel for who all is going to be involved yet. It's a bummer that Shuji Kondo is going to be out for a prolonged period of time with that. I think it was a torn Achilles, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, so he, the, he, yeah he's completely out for a world, which is a bummer, because I would imagine he would have been in Yoshino's farewell match, given the Italian collection connection there. But I, I would just I would urge people to not be expecting Doi versus Yoshino in a singles match at any time uh, within the final months of Yoshino's career. Yeah, and just to further illustrate this point, like the obvious analog is Jushin Thunder Liger, how they did the retirement for him in 2020. You, you're not the the idea that it was Dragon Lee and Hiromu and Hiromu Takahashi in that first match, like that's on the first night. Like th- there's a difference in what those two guys mean to the company and the booking going forward in New Japan than Naruki Doi does, especially Naruki Doi's age. They're not going to burn that. It'd be kind of cool if they did. 
Doin Yoshino it, oh, absolutely would. versus uh Doin Yoshino versus Kakuta and SB Kento, which is where Yoshino got hurt. That's the last match Yoshino wrestled was on December twenty seventh. They did Doin Yoshino mm-hmm. versus Kakuta and SBK. I would like to see them run that back because I think that would be positioning Doin Yoshino against the two brightest future stars of the company. But I have I have no feel for what they're gonna do. Yeah, it, it's honestly way too far out. Other than talking about okay, what's the Dream Gate match for 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 uh, Kobe World? My opinion. So like you know, I just you're not gonna burn Naruki Doi twice in, in the same weekend in Kobe Kenan Hall and stuff of uh, uh, that's not going to go further in the company. You know, like it's still Naruki Doi. Like yes, yes, Masato Yoshino is retiring. Yes, we're all bummed, but Naruki Doi. With Yoshino going, he's probably the number two popular man in the promotion behind Yamato. So they're not going to... Like, having that, like, that's a great moment. But if you're going to be doing that match, you're doing that match on Speedstar Final. You're not doing that match at Kobe World Pro Wrestling Festival. And given the treatment that Ultimo got when he returned to the company, and I, I and I understand that even Yoshino being as injured as he is is in a, is in a different physical state than Ultimo was, but the Ultimo template, from what we saw at World 2019, the Ultimo template is there. They just need to plug in Yoshino and do Yoshino's things instead of Ultimo's mm-hmm. things, because I, I still think back about just how satisfying and in a weird pro wrestling way it's it's not a term that i think should be used often but how kind of beautiful the ultimo return match was I, yeah I th- you know do the same thing with yoshino it's not complicated yeah yeah yeah. i mean it's gonna be an emotional affecting weekend anyways so like there's those ways to figure it out with that but uh the rest of the show as you said whole lot of fun gonna run down the rest of the card opener is uh Bensuke and Ho Ho Loon. I was trying to think of a way to say they're unaffiliated uh, in this combination. Versus our ED team of Kaido Ishida, SB Kento, and Hip Hop Kakuda. Second match Ultimo Dragon and Dragon Kid versus Sachi Hoko Machine and X. Match three Misaki Mochizuki and Takashi Yoshida versus Kazma Sakamoto and Kai. Match four Don Fuji and Toru Owashi versus Yazushi Kanda and Kakatora. And then match five is Natural Vibes versus Masquerade. It's KZ, Susumi Yokosuka, Kinki Horiguchi, and UT versus Shun Skywalker, Kota Minora, Jason Lee, and La Estrella. The main event, as we mentioned before, six-man tag team match, Masato Yoshino, Naruki Doi, and Yamato versus the RED team of Eita, BB Hulk, and Hio. Fun show. Lots to like there. I like that Natural Vibes Masquerade match. I'm very curious to see who, who, who uh, X is going to be, and it looks like a very watchable card. Yeah. Honestly, Kazma and Kai, I'm excited to see these two against uh, the buddy cops. You know, Kazma, like we talked about earlier about Kazma and Hulk. The difference between Kazma and Hulk and Kazma and Ishida, Kazma is now showing more overt personality than he did with Hulk. And it's great. That's also a match where it's, you know, it's match three on what is typically a non-televised show. So it's not that big of a deal. But I'm very curious to see who takes the fall in that match because you've got your champions one of your challengers, and then the main event of your next big show. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, Sakamoto can pin Yoshida or can pin Mochizuki. It's no big deal, but I'm just... Yeah. That's one of those where the fall is not very obvious on paper. I, I, I don't know who is going to go over and who's taking the fall there. And and then, of course, there's X, which is fascinating to me, because you have Ultimo and Dragon Kid. These two guys don't tag team that often. Like, they, they play up on it, but the fact that two dragons are teaming, like these two are teaming, like the, the, the two like dragons really are teaming against Sachioko Machine, who I think we could say this, not break kayfabe, it's Sachioko boy. It's Masato Yoshino is one of his best friends. And X makes me wonder, like, is is Yoshino going to come out here and do a comedy match as, as Sachioko Machine 3 as X? Or are we getting maybe like Darkness Dragon? Kness comes as Darkness Dragon. I, it's funny, or I, can, Kness was going to be my guess of just who can kind of fill this role it, but is Kness hurt I, I forget the last time we saw him uh, I'm guessing Kness is hurt <laughs> like it's the safe answer is Kness hurt probably <laughs> but, he, well, he uh, wrestled I mean, he, on uh, April 4th it was a non-televised show Horiguchi and Kagatora against Kness and Kanda I just noticed this I, I'm looking at Kness's uh, uh, Twitter profile and June 27th the 25th anniversary show for both Gamma and Kness. 25th, my goodness. Is Kness, without looking this up, because I, well, I, you can look it up. I'm not going to look it up. That's why I'm asking you. Is he a war trainee? Michinoku Pro. Did he ever wrestle in Michinoku Pro? Uh, that, I'm going to have to look up. 
myself, but both Kness and Gamma were Michinoku Pro trainees originally. Okay, so it looks like he has a few matches in Michinoku. He wrestled mm-hmm. 16 matches, and I don't n- none of these would be on tape because they're all singles matches and, and probably opening matches. And then, yeah, big he's a big Japan guy and a war guy, and then he ends up in Torimon on their second show uh, as yeah, under a as shoot Makoto. name. Yeah, well, he, actually, he wrestles the first show as Makoto Saito and then goes to All Caps Makoto that summer. Um, yeah, where he's a dragon kind of thing. It, it was weird. Fascinating career. Uh, one of those, I, I don't even know of like a basketball comparison you can make or a baseball comparison, uh, but just I, I would like to see what that career looks like fully healthy. Yeah, I mean, that's the big giant one if thing. Uh, I'm right now on Cage Match. Uh, apparently, there's a guy named Junji.com who teamed with Rio Saito to defeat uh, Darkness Dragon Yazushi Kanda and Differ Ariake in 2001. Who's Junji.com? I see that uh, that name all the time. I don't know what the story is behind that, but I am I am oh, well-versed in Cage Match readings of Junji.com. Oh, he's a Hamaguchi guy, better known as Junji Inazuma. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. w- while we're in this uh, random cage match hellhole i watched a match earlier today uh that made me think of you i I, it's on youtube but it's unlisted so i can i can send you the link and listeners if you want this match as well i can send you the link um osaka pro august 13th 2000 there's a singles match between masato yakashuji who i know you like and the man that would later be known as hubbo they had a very fun kind of prime zone-esque singles match that is yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be that would happen on Spears Produce. Like <laughs> yeah. we're we're gonna run that match back. Uh, Habu, you can come in the mask, in the tail. That's fine. But Masato Yakasuji, I've thought more about that wrestler. He will be making an appearance in my top 100. By the way, I think I've said that before. But well, listeners, yeah, no. if you want to link to that at underscore in your case on Twitter, let me know. Yeah, yeah. But like the rest of the show, I mean, it looks like an absolute blast. And I mean. Uh, Toru Washi and Don Fuji tag teaming that's fun and you know even like the opener Ho Ho Loon gets to hang out with the jocks and who amongst us wouldn't want to hang out with Keisuke Akuda Binke over the last few weeks I don't know it, Binke might be kind of exhausting to hang out with but you know that th- that is a fun trios team if you ask me I, I know Jay is at least a I, I don't know if Jay listens to the show I know Jay is aware of the show he definitely know it he exists. has been on the show <laughs> he has been on the show he definitely know the show exists I can't say he listens to it but if he does and he's hearing this come dead or alive when you and Ho-Ho are in the booth please ask him what it was like teaming with Akuda and Ben K because I don't know what the answer is <laughs> going to be but I know the answer is going to be funny I I mean the, 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 that is stuff I think everyone should care about how Ho Ho does with that. Oh, geez. Now I'm thinking about what, that match even more. But yeah, that's, <laughs> those are the shows we have coming up this week. Uh, we'll, we'll have a quiet week after this one because we probably won't. Because there is the show May 1st, but that will be. I'm, tra- I'm trying to think about days of the week and calendars. I'm sorry. Texas educational system is failing me right now. I'm from but, Indiana. I'm not doing much better. Yeah, but. The, those are the two final shows of the month. There'll be no more shows next week. Actually, next Saturday, there is a ED on two show. So not yeah, that, this Saturday that, that coming up. That starts Hell Week, where I think we have what five shows in seven days or something. Ah, uh, we have Osaka on the first with double header, second and third in KBS Hall. Aichi is not taped. Dead or Alive on the fifth, so that's four and five. Yeah, five and seven, and then and then we will have uh six and nine and then we get a week off until fukuoka and then we have the triple shot in hokkaido like that's not a fun week either for them so 15th and 16th they're in fukuoka then they're going to chiba that's not too bad but then they have a travel day and then they wrestle five then they wrestle the 21st the 23rd in in sapporo uh 24th in hakudate and 25th in sendai and then 26th in Niigata. That is not a fun travel week for them. <laughs> no, no, that's uh, that, that's pretty bad because, I mean, three of those, should, the, the, the three Hokkaido shows on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, those are going to be taped. Those are King of Gate shows. They're going to have singles matches on all those shows, so they're going to have to be working hard there. And then, you know, I, um, I, I'm not a ticket buyer at the Sendai Wholesale Center, uh, but I would expect a pretty uh, chill effort on that house show. Yeah, yeah, and then Nigata, if anyone takes it out of third gear, I'd be stunned. 
<laughs> Again, hope you support the company. Hope you enjoy the show. I would just temper your expectations if you're listening to us from Nagata. Uh, hey, maybe something happens and we might be getting the, uh, the getting Ishinariki's kids on that show. You know, I, I, I'm kind of annoyed that the May 30th show... Uh, is it is it the thirtieth that has the battle royal? I why are why is the show that has the King of Gate battle royal not making tape? That just seems like one of those things in twenty twenty one that Gate. we would have figured out by now. Yeah, no, absolutely, we f- we'd figure it out. And any other company but Dragon Gate, I assume that they would take care of it. Maybe they tape it. I don't think they will, but maybe they will. Because that's the last show before Cork and on the third. So that that is when the battle royal is going to be, and that's a show that it's it's Doi versus Diamante, KZ versus SP Kento, and Skywalker versus Kakuta, and what will be a dead or alive rematch, and then the battle royal at the end of the show. Throw throw a camera in there and put that up on the network. That is going to be a big show, and I'm going to be really annoyed if we don't see that battle royal. And, and while you're at it, in Nigata, <laughs> yes, I did say don't expect people to be working real hard. Shin Skywalker versus UT. That, that help, show, that's help. that's uh, Skywalker versus UT, Akuta versus Kakuta, and Susumu versus Jason Lee. By all means, feel free to film that one as well. And, I mean, if you're already bringing out the camera and committing piracy laws, and, you know, we, we know how those go in Japan right now. Uh, if you're in Hakodate and you want to tape, actually, Block B, Dragon Kid versus Jason Lee, and then UT versus Hip Hop Kakuta, yeah. Yeah, and Ata versus SP. One day, I think one day maybe all this stuff gets taped. Maybe, but man, what what a spoil of riches! But I mean, we're getting a lot of awesome stuff taped, so I'm not complaining too much. No, it's it's May is going to be a wild month. I know we've we spent a lot of time talking in the back half of last year about how you know this is the best month to sign up for the Dragon Gate Network. No, this is the best time. I, I don't think there will ever be a month more loaded with stuff making tape and, and big stuff making tape at that than May of this year. So uh, now is the time to hop aboard. I'm very happy with the promotion after this week. I wanted to ask just because it's a double shot and, and I think this is this is relevant. Uh, and I know we haven't been doing a great job of keeping up with this every week. But but Mike Spears, when it comes to the Fukuoka double shot, who do you think won the week? Who do I think won the week? Gosh, I was thinking about this. I was watching this game, <laughs> and I've closed my notebook. Uh, you know, I th- I could be chalk and say Kakuta because he was in the two main events, and you know he looked like a star in both of those. What did Bakudamo do on night two? Yeah, uh, I KZ KZ I think had the most consistent performance across both nights. So KZ. I'm going to go with Kakuta. We'll, we'll we'll split the vote there, and I'm okay with that. So MVPs of this yeah. week, Kakuta and KZ. And I think both of the matches that they were involved with are, are, are worth your time. Absolutely, absolutely. So we went longer than I expected this time, Case, but we had to talk about, about weird dating stories. <laughs> but uh, anything else you want to hit on before we get out of here? No, I've been doing a lot of audio today. I am I'm done now. Yeah, but let's call it. So for Case, I'm Mike. If you want to follow the show, you can follow us at Open Voice Gate. You can follow myself at Fuji Hey with two eyes like Don Fuji. You can follow Case at underscore in your case. But for Case, I'm like, thanks for listening to Open the Voice Gate. We'll be back next week talking about the start of the Speed Star Final Countdown. Take care, everyone.